So now let's run this code. So to test, instead of using Internet Explorer, let me use a Firefox. And now if I run this code, so let's say run this code, it will it will open my Firefox. So you can see when you run this code, it will give you a welcome and it will give you a text field where you can enter your value. And once you enter the value, you can click on add. So let me first enter a value, we'll say five. Okay, and click on add, you can see five is getting here. So these values are coming from list and the size of your list is one. Let me add one more element, which is 65, add, you can say 65. You are saying, is it in ascending order? No, if you type even one, it will one it will add one the last. So the size of your uh, list is three now. Let's run this with six. Okay, now you can see we have uh, four elements. What if I remove this, I want to remove this one. So just simply type one and click on, uh oh. Let me click, click on this one and if I click on remove it, will remove, it will remove the first occurrence. And if I, if I type six, if I click on remove, it will remove the first occurrence which is six. So now we have three elements, right? So even if I refresh this page, it will give me error, of course. Even if I remove, refresh this page, you will get the same output. That means your list is not getting clear. Uh, let me close this, let me run this again, provided it will not clear everything. Deployment done. Yeah, you can see the elements are still there. That means this is the stateful. It's because you are maintaining a state of a server or the list. So this is how we need to achieve a, a, a stateful session bean. So the steps you have to remember, first you have to create a web project. In that first you have to create a remote interface. It's because stateful session bean works with remote interface. To create a remote interface, create an interface and provide an annotated annotation which is remote. Provide some methods. Then you have to create a class which will implement that interface. So simply say implements that interface name. Now since we want to provide a stateful session bean, we have to use an annotation called a stateful and define all the methods. Then in this method, you can add or remove or you can return all the elements. And then to test this, we need a client page, which is index.jsp. In index.jsp, first thing you require is this JSP init is because when you run this JSP page, the first function it will call is JSP init, in which I want to create the object of initial context, using which I can search for the implementation, which is list element using a method called as lookup, which belongs to IC, the object of initial context. It will give me the object of my interface, which is list elements remote. Now, once you got the object, now you can check which button was clicked. Is it add num or remove num? So if it is add num, you have to add the element, which is provided by the user or in your text field. If it is remove num, you should uh, remove the element provided by the user. And then if you want to print all the elements, you can use a, a for enhanced for loop to print all the elements and then it will print. So this is how we need to achieve a stateful session bean. So I hope you are clear with your EJB session. Uh, in, so in the first video, it was stateless. Then the subsequent, subsequent videos were stateful. So this was stateless and stateful of the session bean. And uh, do subscribe for the further videos. Thank you so much for watching.